Happy Thursday. Welcome back to part two of this. So everything got cleaned up. We our, our spindle, I cleaned it off really good. I mean, all that grease that was in the keyway is gone. Our bearings, I soaked them in gas. Uh, speaking of brands, I was curious of what ones they were. We've got, one is a Timken. Well, two of these were Timkins and the other ones were, oh, what were they called? NDHs, but again, both made in the US. Both are, Timkins are great bearings. A lot of uh, GM vehicles have Timkins. Um, I looked them over. There's nothing wrong with them. They're a, a tad loose, but there's not like, they're bad. Uh, the way I clean them was I used uh, just gas and then I sprayed them out with a hose real good. The seals, eh, they're not the best, they're not the worst. Uh, they're, they're not as pliable as they probably once were, but we're going to reuse them. We've got our hub all cleaned out. Those were really the worst part of that grease that was in there. It was all so old and dry. So the tools that we're going to need, you'll notice first thing, I'm wearing gloves that, well, one of the fingers already broke, but yeah, it's better than nothing. That's why we have a backup glove. Uh, other tools that we're going to need. I've got a small hammer. We're going to use that to drive our seal in at the end. I've got a pair of needle nose pliers. We'll use that to put our cotter key in. I left my cotter key on the other side and that's okay. I've got a pair of channel locks which we'll use to help tighten the bolt. But again, we're not going to really tighten that. Block of wood because sometimes it's easier to use a block of wood than it is hammer. You know, metal on metal is never good. And then I've also got... Uh, grease. Now a lot of people will buy the grease in the tub. I buy it in the tube. It's cheaper. And I also buy marine grease when I'm doing bearings typically on any trailer of mine. And I know people are like, well, McMullen, it's a few bucks more because it's marine grease. Yeah, but it's actually designed for wet environments. It's designed like boat trailers to get wet. Uh, I'm going to use that over the regular grease because in the event that those seals, which eh, I'm kind of questioning, if I do get water inside here, I'm not going to blow a bearing as easily as if I were to use regular grease. So I'm going to use the marine grease. So let's get started on this. Step one, we need to pack the bearings. So I've already taken a razor blade and I've actually cut this open. And what we're going to do is we're going to take one finger and we're going to take a nice dollop of grease out and we're going to put it right in our non-dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, you're going to put it in your left hand. And if you're left-handed, you're going to put it in your right hand. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take, you can see there's an inner race and an outer, and then there's those actual roller bearings in there. We're going to drive, physically drive the grease up through the roller bearing until it comes out the other side. You don't want to just take and rub grease all over it because you'll actually blow up bearings. So you actually want to, they call it packing a bearing. So what I've always done is you just start this motion where I'm just going to take a little bit off from the, from the dollop, and then in that hitting motion, I drive it into my palm. And we're going to keep doing that over and over. And you'll see the grease starting to, right there, it's starting to squeeze through. That's what we want. We actually want to drive that grease through. And it's not a fast process. And you can see it's a messy process. I wear gloves because, I mean, I guess you could do it barehanded, but ugh, I don't think any amount of ivory or Dawn dish soap is going to get you clean right away. They do make a machine that actually will pack bearings with one push, but again, if you're just doing this in the backyard kind of deal, you're not gonna buy a machine to pack bearings when you can just do it with your hand and a pair of gloves. Yeah, that one's getting really good. I'm gonna, and you can inspect and look and see, you know, push down and see, is it driving grease through? Yes. Uh, looks maybe a little bit right there. Let's see, we're packed. And then any excess grease that's on the inside, I'll just put it all over the outside. And I'm just gonna hang that right on the spindle right now so it's out of the way. It doesn't matter if you get grease on the spindle and actually I'm gonna take my hand and grease up the spindle a little bit. We'll take the other bearing, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pack that one, that outer bearing. Remember the outer one's always the smaller one typically on a trailer. Not always, but every one I've ever worked on. And they pack really quick. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Again, I'm gonna coat it pretty good. And any grease that's on my hand right now, I'm gonna coat that spindle. Then I'm gonna take and try to get as much of the grease off of one hand as possible so I'm not working in gar like just grossness. Okay, and then set that down. So I still got some grease on this hand and here's why. 
Now I'm going to grab my hub and I'm going to put as much grease in there as I can. Uh, carefully grab my tube. And the reason why I like to put grease in the hub, some people don't. Some people just say, well, I packed the bearing. That's good enough. The thing is, is my theory is if I got some grease inside that hub and, you know, the hub starts getting warm, that grease is going to become more and more fluid. So if I got grease in there and the hub's getting warm, well, that grease can then find its way back to the bearing and I take less of a chance of actually blowing up a hub and bearing. You don't want to do that. It's such a mess. If you've ever seen a trailer on the side of the road with its, you know, the wheels off and so forth, it is just an absolute mess. So what's the next step? Well, we got grease in there. I'm going to put the grease down in there the best I can. This hand here, I'm pretty much done messing with the grease. So what I'm going to do, set that in my lap and be aware you're going to Put, probably have grease in places where you didn't think you'd get any so don't do this on your parents sidewalk do it out in the grass or something like that so the next step is I'm out of gloves and I gotta touch the bearings maybe I could cheat a little bit I'm trying to limit the amount of grease on me so the next step is we got to put that outer bearing in or sorry the inner bearing the larger one so I'm gonna drop that in and I'm gonna put this little bearing back and I'm just putting it on the shaft just to hold it so it's out of my way I'm gonna take my rag and wipe up all this and make sure you dispose of your stuff properly you know put it in the garbage don't just let it blow around in the backyard and so forth i know it sounds silly but people do that or they you know it's grease it's oil you don't want it. it's not good for the environment so next thing we got our seal i'm gonna set that back in there kind of start it by hand and then i'm gonna start tapping if it doesn't want to go in right away i may have to get that block of wood so i can actually put on even pressure but these have been this is going to go in pretty easily if it was a brand new seal i would recommend using a block of wood and then forcing that down in so that you're not banging up your seal. McMullen, how deep should the seal be? Just basically you're going to hit until it doesn't go in any deeper. That's that's there. What we don't want to do is we don't want to force that in there too much because then you're going to have, well, you're going to ruin your seal. Carefully take this off and we're probably going to have a little bit of grease get pushed out as I push on the hub. So the hub's going to go on the spindle now. Yeah, there's just a little bit of grease. And I'm actually gonna keep my bearing there to maybe limit a little bit of grease. Yep, there it is, perfect. So, there's a little bit of grease there. I'll take one of my gloves maybe. It's already got grease on it and just wipe some of that off. I put that outer bearing in, the smaller bearing, I, I pushed in with it to kind of limit the, number, the amount of grease that comes out. We've got a retaining washer. Notice there's a keyway and there's an actual key. So make sure, you know, it will only go on one way put that on. The next thing is I always keep a rag just like I wipe my hands off. When you're going to get dirty even with gloves on at least it's not as bad. We've got our castle nut. Make sure you don't cross thread this. You know put it on by hand. In fact you never should need any power tools for this at all. Like if you're using power tools to do trailer hubs there's there yeah I don't know what you're doing don't don't do it. I normally just finger tight and then what I'll do is I'll come back with my pair of adjustable wrenches, or my, and just tighten it a little bit, and you could feel there's pressure on there, and then I'm gonna back it off. So what we're gonna do is let me go grab my counter key that I left over on the other side. Is our counter key? There's a hole in the spindle, and there's a hole, and there's all these grooves in the castle nut. What's gonna happen is that counter key rides inside that or goes between those grooves and then falls through on the actual spindle. So the first thing first is we gotta figure out where the hole was. And if I remember right, it was on top. But, I could be wrong. Nope, right there it is. So here's the deal. It's right there. It's at about the two o'clock position, the hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten this back up and feel, yup, it's tight on there. You don't want to actually tighten, tighten this. Never, ever, ever do you want to tighten this so that there's pressure on the bearings. What you actually want to do is I normally go until I feel some resistance and then I back off at least one, probably two turns, you know, two spots. Again, we want it so that there's just a little tiny bit of play. A loose bearing or a loose hub, believe it or not, Right there, Maybe a little bit less, let's listen. Right there, 
just a little bit of play back and forth, a loose bearing is going to last longer than if you had pressure on it, a lot longer. Um, most people, oh, it's a nut, I gotta tighten it down. No, don't. The last step in this, we got two steps here. We're gonna take our cotter key and we're gonna take it and we're gonna bend it around. And I like to take and bend it both ways. Some people bend it one way or another. And then I like to take the hammer and just kind of make sure that gets wrapped around the castle nut really, really well. Because I don't wanna take a chance of, you know, this is gonna be spinning and I don't wanna take a chance of it actually touching the hub while it goes. You know, and and use. What's going on? Oh, I have a videographer today. My wife said, "Okay, you okay over there? Feet hurting?" No, I need water. Oh, I'm sorry. Either that long? Or am I taking that long? Okay, that looks pretty good right there. I'm happy with that. So, the very last step here. And again, don't set your tools down in the dirt like. I was about to because you will not be happy with the uh, the dirt sticking to them with all that grease on it. You okay? okay. The very last step here is uh, I got to get the bearing buddy that I bought and we'll put that on and we'll be all done. So come back though because I'm going to need you to hold this. It's okay. Why thirsty? That's okay. The price was right for the videographer. I can afford it. Um, so I bought this thing. It's called a bearing buddy. It's got a rubber sleeve on it right now that will take off so you can see. These are typical on boat trailers. Some people think they're garbage and they don't work. I believe in them because it keeps pressure, grease pressure on these. Now, if you've got bad seals, it'll drive grease out the other side, but it really shouldn't matter. So what we're going to do... Is I'll show you what it looks like on the inside real quick. I'll take off the dust cap. Is it's actually got a grease nipple with a spring. And the idea is that once this goes on, not only does it protect the inside from dirt and debris, but I can use that grease nipple and actually add more grease in there, you know, as I feel I need to. And it creates a positive pressure inside that tub. The idea then is that if, you know, it was a boat and we went in the water, that positive pressure in there expels water or keeps the water out. For me, I just like the idea that I can add grease. Um, that, that just like, seems like a no-brainer to me. So this is a brand new uh, bearing buddy. So I'm going to have to drive it on to my actual hub. So got it started. And this is where that... block of wood comes in. That's not horrible right there. So, okay. You know what? I'm not happy with how tight that is. I think I'm going to go back and loosen it up a little bit. It should never be that tight. But that's okay. So that's that's how we put together a hub. I just have to, you know, take off the bearing buddy. That's not a big deal. I'll take off the or uh, take off the bearing buddy. I'll loosen up that castle nut one turn, and we'll be good to go. Remember, if you got any questions, you can email me or contact me through your mind. Uh, your assignment will be posted down below. Answer these questions. Again, your assignment for this week. You'll have some questions below the link for this video. Make sure you answer them. Have a good weekend.